Okay, I've been good. I did my homework. Now it's time for me to work on what I want to work on. And today, that says PET 4032. I can't wait to get into it. So a couple of months ago, I received this PET 4032 from Sean at Geek with Social Skills, and I've been dying to dig into it ever since then. And I admit, usually I try to keep a machine unlooked at until I do the video. In this case, I peeked inside. I just wanted to have an idea what's going on. So I, I opened it up and took a look. And there's a bit of work cut out for us here. But this is an amazing machine. And I'll talk a little bit more later about the history of the pet and how it is one of the, uh, the coolest old computers that I could dream of having. I was talking to someone the other day uh, about where things go in a collection and what machines you keep and you don't keep. And to me, a machine like this is literally the anchor at the beginning of the timeline for your computer collection. My understanding is this machine came from the Alameda School District near San Francisco and that it's been in storage for a long time. So let's take a look inside and see how it looks. All right, so the first thing we need to do is get this screw out and we gotta be really careful with that. Um, in this case, one of the screws is missing. There is a screw on the right side, but the left side one is missing. Uh, I think probably the easiest way to do it, it'd be to lift the machine up about this much, use a small screwdriver to get the screw out, and then uh, lower it back down. In this case, just to give you a better view, I'm gonna raise it up a little more than I would normally. So I'll raise it up to here. There's a single screw underneath here on this side. I'll remove that. As you can see, just a basic screw. There should be one again on the other side, but that's not there. And then, once we've done that, it should just open up just like that. Would you like your oil changed, sir? And then there is a kickstand here, so I can just lower it down right like that, and you can work on it that way. You can also give it a support in the back, which I don't have set up right yet. But if you set up the support right, you can rest it back about that far. It just needs something supporting its weight. So now that we've got that open, I am gonna give you a look at the inside and see what we have here. So I'm going to uh, see if I got something the right size to support the back of this. Perfect, perfect. So apparently a floppy disk case is a uh, perfect support. Well, I am seeing a lot of corrosion, a lot of damage. Um, I think this is going to be a bit of a, a bit of a project. All right, I love a good project. The pins on these connectors are absolutely green with corrosion. The uh, the voltage regulators. This one doesn't look too bad, but man, the one in the back is just a solid mass of rust as is the, uh, the high voltage transformer. But the worst part is, is looking in at the pins on these chips. They are absolutely just mounds of rust. 6522, I don't even know which one is a 6502, no, wait, no, 6520. So looking at the condition, the transformer, the voltage regulator, the horrible shape of the chips, uh, there is just no way I feel comfortable doing a smoke test on this. This is going to have to get refurbed before I even find out what works and what doesn't, which kind of sucks, but I just think there's too much risk in trying to power this up the way it is, way too much risk. Uh, so in this video, I think what we're going to be doing is an assessment. We will tear this machine down break it down to its component parts, assess the condition of each, determine what I need to order, uh, and get the parts on order. And then in a future video, we'll start restoring the individual components. So this board is going to be a lot of work. So before I pull the board out, I'm going to start out by putting just a little bit of deoxid on the ICs and the connectors. And I'm just doing that now so it has time to soak in and do its wonders to loosen things up because these things are really crusty. Interestingly, in the Stone collection, I found lots of 80 series, like the 8032 stuff. There's the Series 8000 User's Guide. There is the 64K RAM Expansion Guide. 
There is the original technical manual, which I have in this binder, but this is an original Commodore technical manual for the 8032 and for the 9060 and 9090 drive. Also have the Super Pet manual, but that's not gonna do me a lot of good here. So I started out by printing out the 4016, 4032 uh, technical manual, and I'll put a link to that below, but uh, this is a, a great manual. It includes wonderful stuff like actual uh, oscilloscope traces. So in a major restoration like this, I kind of have a process I like that's a little different than a, a more minor job. Uh, in this case, what I want to do is I want to break everything down to its constituent parts. Then I start with the chassis, get that all cleaned up. If I need to do any touch-up paint or anything on it, get that done, and then start working my way through. Start with the, the transformer and the power supply, and just work my way up getting everything repaired one piece at a time and returned to the hole. So then when I'm done, I've got a fully restored machine. In the case of this project, at that point, I think is where I'm gonna really start the troubleshooting. So without any further ado, let's start getting her apart. First, before I pull the main board out, I wanna get this excess off of it from the, uh, the deoxit. Then we need to disconnect all the connectors. So there's connector here for the monitor. There is the connector here for the power supply and basically the AC voltages off the transformer come in here to feed to the voltage regulators and through this cap. But then it looks like the five volt feeds back through the big, uh, big filter cap here. So it feeds back here and then comes back to the connector. So a little bit of a loop back going on there. And that deoxid did the trick. These are coming off easily. And when I tested them earlier, they felt really stiff. And then finally, this one here goes to the keyboard. And that one's a little stiffer, but still not terrible. So then I'm gonna take out the screws. Screws are here, here, here. And I believe that's it, is just the three. And then there's a uh, pin coming through here, a plastic retainer. So once we get these screws out, we'll get our first look at the bottom of this board and see how that's looking. They're just a little rusty. All right, then this deal here, generally you can just squeeze them. They are not real tight. There we go. I'm use the big anti-static bag here. I'm grounding myself. Also, this is Oregon and it's pouring rain out. So if you're wondering why I'm not wearing an anti-static strap, the humidity's through the roof at the moment. That gives us our first look in the bottom of the case, and it doesn't look too bad. These pins aren't broken. That's a little better than I was expecting. Let's take a look at the bottom of the board. So clearly this board has had some work done on it in the past. As a school district uh, machine, I'm not really too shocked. So it looks like, is that a triple nickel there that's been replaced? Yep. So the, uh, the timer's been replaced. And it looks like they uh, pulled and socketed a couple of chips. Doesn't look terrible. Don't see any bodge wires. So there's the board, and it is going to start out getting a bath in the ultrasonic cleaner. So to remove this cap, we've got a pair of wrap ties. The first time I took this transformer out, I did it completely wrong. So I was pulling out these four screws to lift it out. Well, those are actually holding everything together. And on top of that, this screw in the back is just totally messed up and locked. I cannot get it out. So to take out this transformer, the first thing you want to do is grab yourself a 5 16 inch, and I don't know what the metric equivalent would be, nut driver, and pull the nuts off of these two ground connections. And they just pop right off. So we got one there, and we got one back here. That will pull these three ground wires loose. Then to remove this assembly out, there's four screws. There's two here and two on the back. I'm gonna start with the ones on the back. So we'll just drop that down. So right here, there's these two black screws. Careful, there's a, uh, a star washer on there to make sure you got a good ground. 
Then here with that out of the way, there's two more screws. They just come right out. And that comes right out of there. So that's a transformer assembly. It includes the power inlet, which has some reefers in it, the on-off switch, the fuse. And I'll take this apart further when the time comes to, uh, to restore it. So I'm just gonna set that aside for now. Uh, we can see here that we've got the screws for the hinge, uh, release those from the other side. But before I do that, I wanna go ahead and pull the, uh, the back off and the monitor out. So yeah, the monitor itself isn't looking too bad. Hello. And uh, I don't see any sign of burn-in, even with my glasses on. I don't know how visible that'd be on here. All right, so the back cover here is attached with just two screws. I'll pull those out of there. And then this should just slide back. There we go. There's a date, April 15th, 1983. And then here we've got the VDU board, CRT, flyback. Just for the record, this machine has not been plugged in in decades, so I don't need to worry about discharging the CRT. And even if I did, um, a monochrome 12 inch CRT is not gonna hold enough of a punch to do more than uh, make me wish I hadn't touched it. this loose so it's sitting on a standoff and the standoff spinning so what I'm going to need to do is get a hold of the standoff to hold it in place while I remove said screw slinky that's kind of funny it says CRT earth so literally that spring just rubs against the coating on the CRT to form a ground. That seems a little crazy to me. But we now have full access to the VDU board. The bottom of it looks just fine. It looks like it's never been worked on. So once we get this cleaned up, we'll see how it's doing. See, of course, some rust on it. All right. Got the CRT sitting in here. And that is attached with four screws. And I'm gonna go ahead and take out two of the screws now. Big screws with big washers. And then what I'm gonna do here, so I'm gonna hold the CRT, tip it back, and remove the other two screws so that it cannot go falling. Gently, gently tip it forward. So to ensure the, uh, the safety and security of this CRT tube, um, uh, boy, that's redundant, isn't it? C cathode ray tube tube. I'm gonna put it in some nice secure bubble wrap like this, and then lower it down into a box that just fits. I'm gonna place this in a safe spot on the top of my roll top desk where nothing's ever gonna get set on it, near it, or around it. This thing is a mess, but I kinda knew that, so I'd take the tube out of it. And as you can see here, there is just massive, massive rust and scale in here. So that's gonna need a lot of, a lot of treatment believe I can just remove these five screws. Again, many of which are quite rusty. And they do have nuts on the back, so I gotta stick my hand in there and hold on to them. Ah, tight. Washer's glued itself with all the rust. Now, that uh, should just lift right off of there. So one last thing to pull off of here, and that's the keyboard. And I'm gonna give my wrist a break. So, electric screwdriver for the removals. And 
And these must have been removed more than once before because they are stripped to start with. So. All right, keyboard is free. The infamous pet keyboard. I'm sure this will be fun. It's so pretty. I mean, look at those pristine keys. Do those look like they've ever been used? Those look brand spanking new. All right, so let's see how well this cleans up. A lot of rust here, but this piece is plastic. The other pieces were metal. So let's just give it a little bit of Windex to start off with and see where that gets us. And I thought I'd do a side by side just to see how well it cleans up. Wow, that cleans up nice. Holy Toledo, look at that. Now this rust on the other hand, that may be a bit of a pickle. Also this, uh, tape residue. It's probably going to take something besides Windex to get it off. Let's try a little magic eraser action here. See how that does. It's getting the grime out of the texture pretty well. Ain't touching the rust. All right, I'm going to continue to clean this off camera and then we'll take a look and see how it comes out. At this point, we're looking pretty good on the top cover, except for the rust. And I tried some Evapor Rust and that just didn't touch it. I ordered some rust converter that was recommended for the metal by some people on the VCF forum. And so I'm going to try that. But I got an email saying your product is on the way, but it's delayed. So who knows? So I got myself a long to-do list, and this is just things I need to do before I plug it in and turn it on. And if you want to see every detail on it, it's in the description below. But long story short, I got to deal with the rust. I need to deal with the corrosion on the main board. So the main board's going to have to be cleaned. All of the sockets have to be replaced. And then all of the damaged chips are going to have to be desoldered and socketed so they can be replaced if needed. And so they can be properly cleaned. This keyboard is a mess. I have a key coming, but it's coming via Canada Post and uh, it's already been over a month, so who knows when that's gonna show up. Um, I also have a label coming for this, but that hasn't come yet. The VDU board needs to be cleaned up. It needs to have some rusty parts replaced. I'm not a fan of submerging flyback transformers. Uh, I've just seen some where the seals are broken and it's hard to get the liquid out. So I'm gonna clean it all with a brush and alcohol rather than putting it through the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, another thing I've been working on is finding replacement screws because while I like cleaning up my old screws, these are beyond cleaning up. They would just be a pitted mess if I tried cleaning them and a lot of them are uh, stripped out. So once the parts come in and I get more progress done on this, I'll be back with another video. In the meantime, check out this video where I restored an Amiga 1000 from the Stone Collection for a Humane Society fundraiser. Thanks for coming!